Today my guest is Laurent Bonion. Laurent, how are you? I'm very good. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for being here. Absolutely. I had Dev some and on my show. It's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Indeed. Um, tell me, what do you do? So I'm, uh, for the past two years, I've been uh, what they call a cloud advocate at Microsoft. Uh, and uh, we got hired to try to basically talk about Azure services, create samples, create documentation, uh, go and advocate the cloud, <laughs> which is exactly the name. the name of the team, yes. Uh -huh. And uh, this, uh, this team right here, the Ninja... No, the Ninja was actually from uh, Tech Summit Switzerland. Oh my However, <laughs> we do have here a logo oh, with, our, with our raccoon, gotcha. which I don't know if we can see that. But the raccoon is our mascot, and that was a mascot of, uh, of Tech Summit Switzerland, which right. is a, a conference. Since I live in Switzerland, of course, I was helping them, and uh, it was a fantastic conference there. Okay. Yeah, so, um, so that team was created uh, about two and a half years ago. Now I joined about two years ago um, when we were still a small team. Now we are a fairly large team. And uh, really our goal is to reach out to communities and developers everywhere and uh, not just teach them about Azure services and all that, but also hear them their feedback and bring the feedback back to the, um, to, to the teams and to the product groups. And so uh, I can only encourage everyone to reach out. My personal expertise is more in the domains of uh, .NET, C Sharp, uh, Visual Studio, the classic Visual Studio, etc. Uh -huh. uh, that's where I came from, I would say. But uh, gradually, I'm learning more and more about, uh, you know, Visual Studio Code and Azure Functions, and uh, even uh, you know, doing more web than before, I guess. And uh, recently, also doing uh, more um, more stuff with the cognitive services, for example, okay. and uh, database as well, uh, etc. So it's been uh, an interesting you know, trip for me because I, I've had to widen my horizon quite a bit. It sounds like a fun job. It is a fun job. It's a job where uh, we are learning all the time yep. and uh, it can be sometimes a little bit overwhelming. So it's fun, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's challenging. Yeah, we, we suffer. I, the joke on our team is that the whole team suffers from imposter syndrome. <laughs> uh, we are all sure that we are not at the right place. And every time we start learning something new, we're like, oh my God, I, I probably should just resign. <laughs> uh, not because we don't like it, we love it, but just yeah. because we feel inadequate sometimes and uh, really so the uh, yeah you you need to love to learn if you want to do that job I for sure I love, that's why I like to be the dumbest guy in the room yeah and exactly I, I that's what you want that. to do so, yeah so far I'm doing okay <laughs> I don't, but yeah I, I mean there are some people here in this conference I, I told you before right I just went to see a session about uh, quantum computing oh and gosh. That is that thing is not even science. I mean, it's witchcraft at some it's point. You know? yeah. It's not rocket witchcraft, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess at some point maybe it will be. I don't actually know. It, actually, it is. I yeah. Uh, it, let's uh, let's talk about databases because we were talking yeah. off camera about uh, migrating databases in Azure. Sure. I, I find that that fascinating because it's like it's a common business problem. Oh yes. And you've had some experience with that. Yeah, so um, recently we just finished, uh, so now we are in, um, <coughs> we are in May, and, uh, which means that we just finished literally this week. In fact, we had the last edition of uh, Microsoft Ignite the Tour, which okay. is a, a big conference that went in 17 locations mm -hmm. worldwide. Uh, I think I heard we had a total of 50,000 viewers all around the world. Uh, plus, some sessions were also recorded and are available uh, on uh, on Channel 9 and on YouTube. Mm. Um, we recorded the, the Amsterdam event. And so uh, that was quite popular and, and quite nice. And uh, for that, we uh, were asked to create some sessions. And um, I ended up creating a session about database migration. And um, the funny thing is that it all started with um, Scott Gustry, who is uh, my boss, 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 or something like that, oh, like yeah. five, six level above me. He's a smart guy. Yeah, a very smart guy, and uh, was doing um, a demo at uh, Tecorama Netherlands last uh, last year in November, and uh, asked me if I could prepare uh, like a five minute demo about migrating a database, and um, and I did, and it was really fun and interesting, and um, I, I was amazed at how a topic which I thought would be maybe a little bit dry became really interesting with the new tools that we have. And okay. we have really amazing tools like the database migration service, which, I, which I'll talk about in a, in a moment. Mm. And, um, and so uh, eventually we decided, okay, let's uh, take that as, a, as an idea and then expand it to an hour. And, right. uh, 
uh, and it's not just a five minutes demo which become an hour you know just by talking right uh, it's a lot more than that and so we decided to expand um, the, the the example and also one thing which was special in ignite the tour is that we had some learning paths where we were basically telling a story and so mm -hmm. the learning path that i was in was migrating to azure mm -hmm. And so we say, okay, let's create an application. And this application was a branded Tailwind Trader. So there uh, was a whole story uh, around uh, it. Company. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. So it was uh, the new Northwind. Uh, our uh, our narrative was it's that a, it's a toy company, right? Uh, well, it's uh, it's an everything company, okay. really. They have a they have a catalog. Right, <laughs> That's what they have. The <laughs> exactly, exactly. The I think my favorite item is uh, they have uh, an incredible frozen chair. Whoa. I remember that, yeah, <laughs> which is which can be useful in summer, of uh, course. Just take my money. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so there was a whole narrative around it, and uh, which made actually uh, thing um, more entertaining. And and really, the learning path, the idea was to say, okay, let's start by migrating the application services, the websites to Azure. Then we'll migrate the database, which was my session. And then after that, there was also some uh, adding some monitoring, for example, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and mm. uh, and moving uh, the whole you know the whole application space there. So in the case of the application we had uh, of, of the database sorry we had two uh, we had uh, an SQL server mm -hmm. that we wanted to migrate and okay. then we had uh, a MongoDB that we wanted to migrate okay the assumption that in this fictitious company it was all on premises to start with yes that is correct so um, assumption that it was all on premise and assumption that they had grown which I think is a fair assumption historically having some very hybrid scenarios hybrid, hybrid like what? Uh, hybrid uh, data sources, so Mongo and SQL, okay. you know, hybrid uh, technology for the app services. In one case, one of the app services we had was a uh, Node.js, the other one was uh, an ASP.NET, okay. uh, which is often the case, right? Sure. So often you end up with uh, solutions that you want to migrate to the cloud and you're like, okay, I have an, a number of technologies. Mm -hmm. That I need to that I need to handle, mm -hmm. and also the SQL server was uh, was an old version, so that was mm. also something uh, which we had to take in account, and so we ended up um, moving uh, to the, the MongoDB to Cosmos DB. Okay. Yep, with the Mongo API. Exactly. So Cosmos has this uh, interesting, uh, you know, feature that you can select multiple APIs right. uh, to access the data and uh, read and write. And in that case, we have a Mongo API, which is very uh, very convenient because literally. I could migrate the data and I didn't have to change anything in the application, so that was cool. Is that right? So did you have to change anything at all in the database just for the call-in code? No, just a connection string, that's all. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. Is that, is that, that's not always true, is it? I mean, there are, it's like the, I've seen claims that it's 99%. Yeah, time. so there is, uh, obviously, I mean, it is, uh, even though they are using Mongo APIs, mm -hmm. it is a different database system, so there will be at some point maybe some something. Edge cases that yes, you might run into. exactly. Uh, the good thing is that you can actually, um, I, I mean, you, you, you can try it out quite easily, right? I mean, you can uh, run a staging environment, you can, you can okay. test it fairly easily. Uh, the port itself um, in the demo was made using the Mongo migration tool, so Mongo Dump and Mongo Restore. Uh, which are really native Mongo tools. Oh, I'm not. I don't use Mongo very much. Are these are uh, yes. open source tools that you can yeah. just download. Is that what happens? Those are uh, just utilities that you install when you install Mongo. Okay. Uh, you can uh, on, on your on your machine. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a number of utility tools, and uh, one of them is Mongo Dump, which is basically creating a dump of um, you know uh, of the um, of the database and there and there is a mongo restore and so every time you install mongo on the system okay. which are in our case was a linux virtual machine running on premise um, then you get mongo the mongo restore so you can just use them so, and so is that to say that when you migrate, it's a matter of taking your existing Mongo, dumping it somewhere, and then restoring from that to That's Azure? what we did in that case, which okay. is a common model when you want to migrate a database. You do a dump and you do a restore. Same okay. thing in SQL also. Uh, in SQL, uh, we have... Uh, for backup and restore. Which backup sounds, and restore. Sounds more dignified than dump. Obviously, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, that is correct. Um, but yes, that's, that's kind of the ID. Oh. And, uh, and, and the good thing with, uh, with the restore is that it can also um, be remote and so I was running the Mongo restore command on the database uh, sorry on the virtual machine in which the database was installed but my target was the Cosmos DB which was in Azure okay okay and so that was running over the wire basically right. yeah that would make sense that at least either your source or your destination exactly be maybe both exactly in that case uh, the, the the destination was remote and so I, why did I do that it was uh, to kind of prove the point that 
I was targeting a Cosmos DB, but I was using native Mongo tools. Mm -hmm. Now, the cool thing is that we also have another way to do that, and that's the database migration service that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And database migration service is a new tool that uh, we have uh, in Azure, uh, which has been released in October last year, okay. more or less. And um, <coughs> what this tool does is that it's also going to allow you to configure a data transfer, okay. so copying the data from a source to a target. But the nice thing is that as long as the tool is running, um, it does the transfer and then it keeps running. And every time you change something in the source, it's going to copy that to the target, hmm. which is nice because it means that you can do your, your, uh, your transfer, your port, your migration, and then you can, you, you keep the website running on the old database. Okay, it doesn't matter, it's running, wow. which means that the old database keeps getting modified, mm. obviously, right, when people write, but those changes keep getting synchronized. I see. So it's very nice because it allows you to have minimum downtime, you right. don't switch off your application, you keep it running, you will uh, run some tests on your target database, maybe a staging environment of your website, make sure that everything's running, and then when you're satisfied that the data is okay, you can switch the connection string, mm. and then finally you can stop the uh, migration service because it's not needed anymore. Oh, in this case, you migrated from on-premises SQL Server to Azure SQL Database? Yes, so I did two. So the uh, DMS, the mm. Database Migration Service, is able to handle more than just SQL, so it handles a number of, of source mm. and targets. For example, it does handle Mongo to so Cosmos. I could have used that. I could have used that. I decided to use the native tools mostly to prove a point. Sure. Uh, and also, it was a nice narrative, you know, starting with the native tools and then going to, to the Azure tool. Um, so I could have uh, used that, um, but in that case, I didn't. And then I used the DMS, the Database Migration Service, for the SQL migration. So for the SQL migration, it has um, uh, also an, another thing that we featured, if you want, in the, in the demo, is that the SQL server I was using as a source was relatively old. And uh, you know that we still have some very old versions of SQL Server in the sure. wild. Yep, some of them are uh, getting out of support. In fact, the 2008 version is getting out of support this year. Mm -hmm. And um, and then we even have uh, some SQL Server 2005 in the wild, you know. And uh, now we have a new version of SQL Database uh, called uh, SQL Database Manage Instance. Right. And this one is... How does that differ from... Uh, Azure SQL databases. Yeah, so it's a new flavor of Azure SQL database. Uh, it is going to um, use the same infrastructure, same tools, a lot of the same features, but it has two major uh, additional features if you want. One is increased compatibility all the way down to SQL Server 2005. Oh up to 99 point something percent compatibility. Mm. So uh, the number of features that before we didn't have in Azure SQL database, which sometimes was an issue like uh, cross database joins, for yeah. example, um, also compiled CLR, sometimes people are running, you know, compiled CLR uh, in the database that was not available in SQL database. Mm. And now it is available in manage instance. So that one feature, the other feature that is also interesting is that this new database is totally private. It doesn't have any public IP. Uh, if you want to access it, so you run it on a virtual network, a uh, private virtual network. If you want to access it, you need VPN, express route, any kind of uh, private communication way, but there is no that's public the, port. That's the SQL managed instance? That's a managed so instance. So by default, it is not exposed publicly? Oh, it's not by default. It's never exposed publicly. There's no way to expose it publicly? No, there is no way to I expose it okay. publicly. So uh, what we did uh, in our case, is architecturally, if you want to r be able to run uh, a website accessing, it was a web service really accessing this database, is that we ran the uh, application service, the web service, in the same virtual network. So okay. we containerized it, put it in the same virtual network, mm. and then we opened a port in the container mm. to the public, but the database itself was never exposed to the public. And so why is that interesting? It's because there are a lot of firms who didn't go to the cloud because they didn't want to have any public access to their DB. Okay. Yeah, any that, public that port. That kind of uh, alleviates those trust issues. Exactly, exactly. Now, you, if you do that, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, you have possibilities to add some peripheral services like an app service, etc. Open a port to, uh, to the public if you need to, to access that. For example, uh, port 80, you know, for, uh, for, for HTTP. But by default, your, well, not by default, your database itself, the data itself is protected. So the only way to access the database is through some uh, intermediary service that's running on 
that same virtual private on the same virtual network or if you have express route uh, you oh. could also have uh, for example a non premise service communicating via express route with a database mm. or if you have uh, of course vpn if you want to, to to vpn into your database you can do that as well into your server i see mm -hmm. uh, w w as you're building this demo would were there anything unexpected that popped up that uh, was a big challenge um it worked pretty well. Um, I had uh, <laughs> I had uh, one uh, very annoying effect, which is that uh, ten minutes into my very first rendition of this presentation, my uh, my uh, PC blue screened, <laughs> which uh, <laughs> which that is of course not what you want. Yep. That happens, that happens yeah. in front of an audience. Uh, yes, oh, absolutely. A okay. uh, good thing is that the uh, the blue screen doesn't render on the screen, so it just went black. <laughs> and uh, interestingly, uh, it was not too bad because um, the good thing is that I, I had a lot of tabs open in Edge. Uh, uh -huh. You know, all the portal and big, uh, my demo basically. Right. And so when I r when I reopened Edge, s thankfully Edge it was configured to reopen the okay. tabs, and so I didn't have to log into anything. I just opened Edge, and then everything was there. Then I had a few scripts to run but uh, you know those I, I ran them like in the background while I was speaking to people so it was not too bad but it was annoying uh, and that's totally separate <laughs> from anything else um, other than that no it went really well uh, we had um, we barely had issues uh, with that um, and uh, really the, the database migration service runs well obviously mm -hmm. our demo database was relatively small and so it was okay. fast it was megabytes it was a, a right. few megabytes but uh, I mean literally you can run that service on gigabytes of data or more and uh, it's just going to take longer that's all I, it is. I actually expect you to say that because this database migration service is pretty new mm -hmm. that there were some kinks in that but you didn't experience any. No I didn't and in fact the uh, database migration service is uh, generally available to the public uh -huh. so uh, when we started the tour it was not yet it was in preview okay. uh, but when we uh, during during mm, I think it was uh, late last year um, that it was released or maybe early this year I forgot um, and uh, it got generally available and so which means that it is in a state that is absolutely usable. It's production ready, ready, okay. ready. Yeah. And your tour is just about over, or has it finished? So the tour just finished. Um, I wasn't at the last uh, session. It was in Mumbai this week, um, and uh, now we finished this edition, and we are already starting to prepare a, a new edition, which at some point is going to come out. And I don't want to say too much about oh, okay. that, but are, stay are tuned. Are they somehow related to the Ignite conference? Is that what it's called? Um, Ignite tour? Well, it's a branding thing, and I would say that uh, partly yes. Um, so um, we developed the sessions independently from Ignite, hmm. uh, but uh, because we wanted to have those learning paths, so there were there were a few uh, features uh, which we wanted to create for Ignite the tour. Okay. Uh, however, a lot of the material that we presented because we started just after Ignite, the big Ignite, um, a lot of the uh, the features we presented were absolutely related to that. And for example. At Ignite, um, they introduced uh, the DMS, the Database Migration Service. They introduced SQL Database Manage Instance, and so basically, I, I, I you know, had the advantage of uh, connecting to the team and getting their their information there and, and creating the sessions this way. Uh, very cool. Mm -hmm. well, I've learned a lot today. Thank you. Well, for yeah, that. absolutely. Um, you're, um, w uh, where are you writing? Are the things that you're writing, are they out public that we can see them? Yes. So there is a, a lot of things uh, that we put on uh, on GitHub. Um, and so if you check the uh, Microsoft organization at GitHub, we have a lot. So um, GitHub.com slash Microsoft. Yes. And then we also have uh, a lot of uh, our content now. Some of us at least started uh, writing for a publication called Dev2. So it's uh, D-E-V. Uh, period to dev2 mm. and uh, there there is also an azure organization and so if you uh, if you subscribe to this azure organization you will get notified every time that uh, one of us writes about something related to azure okay and so a lot of um, the content that we write in terms of samples articles and things like that ends up there uh, we also have a medium publication so there is also a, an azure publication on medium where mm. we write that's a lot and uh, yeah and other than that uh, just uh, basically the best way to get informed about what we do is to follow us on twitter I would say uh, because uh, every time that something comes up we will uh, what's definitely your what's your Twitter handle it's uh, l-b-u-g-n-i-o-n all right and where are you speaking next what that where are you speaking next uh, so here uh, we just finished DevSum uh, this week I was also at Tecorama and now I'm going to go back home and on Tuesday we have in uh, Zurich Switzerland we have uh, .NET Day 
which is a whole day of .NET, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm very excited because my uh, colleague and good friend Donovan Brown is going to keynote. Uh, Donovan um, Brown is a friend of mine as well. Yes, he's a great say. guy. And uh, Kathleen Dollard, oh, uh, who very is nice uh, lady. very sharp lady. Uh, yes, program manager for all the uh, .NET languages, is also going to speak great. there. So I'm quite excited about that. And then after that, I'm uh, pretty much going to Boston for Visual Studio Live, mm -hmm. and so that will be the next uh, international conference. Yeah, in uh, two three weeks' time, I think. Laurent, thank you so much. Absolutely, thank you. The thing I love the most about technology is not just the tech. The tech is fascinating, but really coming to those conferences and meeting all the friends that I made in the past 15 years and the community feeling is really what is driving me. I love that feeling. I'm really super happy to be here uh, with David and you know talk about um, what we do. But there are also a lot of speakers who are longtime friends and this is really a fantastic feeling. Thank you so much for having me.